Hello everyone, in this video, as you might have guessed by the title of it, I want to show you and explain to you what's the difference between margining and padding. Sometimes it could be very simple to understand and sometimes it can be very difficult to wrap your hand around it. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So what I want to do here is I want to go to my pages and I'll add a new page just to demonstrate to you in a very simple way what's the difference between the two of them. I'll create the new page and then the new page I'll just name it by margin and padding. So I'll edit with Elementor and I'll set it to Elementor Canvas. Right over here under the settings in your left bottom hand corner of your screen just click the wrench icon and then scroll to the bottom and then page layout just set it to elementary canvas so now that we have everything started from a clean page what i want to do here is i want to drag and drop a new container right over here and i want to set a border so it will be a very simple way to understand it but before that i want to add a title so we will have an item to play with so let's drag and drop a heading and right over here i want to set it to the middle and let's put the item here in the middle so let's put it to center but one little thing here is that you can see here it only takes the top part so to fix that what i want to do here is i want to set the min height by view height to 100 so it will take the entire space of my screen here i want to set the border around the text so I'll show you in a minute why is that. But first I want to select the text and go to advanced and then align it to the middle or to the center. Now here I want to set the border. So in order to do that, I'll scroll to the bottom a little bit until I see the border and open it. Here I want to set the border to something like three and border type, I'll do solid and then, oh, sorry, I did the border radius. You know what, we can keep the, or set the border radius to 12. And here I want to do the border to three and then Put the border color, yeah, I'll keep it as black. Now, one thing that you might have noticed here is that the border is really, really close to my title. So here is where the margin and padding come into play. Now here, what you want to do here is go to your layout and here you want to set your margin and padding. And we'll see in a minute why it makes sense here. The padding, those four boxes are applied to what's happening from the border in. Let me show you what I mean here. So let's do something like 50 pixels. So because it is connected here by link values together it will be 50 in one and all the other ones will be all the same so let's do 50 and here you can see that the border is expanded toward outwards it means that the title is in the middle but there is a padding that surrounds it so it means it pushes the border out so it means from the title out now the margin will do the same thing but from the border out now let me show you what i mean here so let's do the same thing here let's put here 50 pixels now you can see here and it's good that it's displaying it that this little pink border is what is called the item itself or the contained item inside of it so here we have the margin which is the border all this is our margin and all this is our padding now padding and margin can be very useful depending on your situation but what we can do here is let's say I want to set the border or the padding for that matter to 10 and then I want to put the margin to 20. It looks somewhat all right, but here it's a very simple example, so it won't tell or say a lot, but I want to show you one more example where it can be applied in life or when you're building websites. But before that, I want to show you how it appears in your code, because it is very, very, very important to understand that, because if you're dealing with websites, it is really important to understand where it comes in in our code. So let's publish it for now, and then let's hide this sidebar and let's inspect it. So you can do it whether it's with your mouse or F12, depending on your choice. So I'll do my right click and then I'll hit inspect. So beside the fact that we have here our styles, so let's inspect this item. As you can see here, so when I click it, beside the fact that we have our styles over here, so when you hover each one of them, you can see the green, which is designated for the padding, and the orange is designated for the margin. If you want to have a more simpler understanding of what is happening here, you can scroll to the bottom of all the styles, and you can see here that we have the padding here, designated by 10 here, 10 here, and then 20 of the margin. You can see here also the border designated over here, and the width of the element. We have here the padding, 
the border and the margin. So let's see how it applies in real life or on websites. For this example, I'll take my front page of this demo website and I'll edit it with Elementor to show you how the padding and margin can come into play when you're building your websites. So let's head over and edit it with Elementor. So now that the editor is loaded, what I want to show you is how you can stylize different elements and to see how the padding and margin can come and help you to style your elements a little differently than what you get out of the box. So here we have this title. So let's edit it and let's head over to advanced. And here we have nothing, but we see here that we have a little space over here. So let's say I want to add a space also from the left. So what I want to do here is I want to usually I'm setting all my margin and padding by M's, not pixels, or you can use also the rams view with I wouldn't recommend you because that you rarely will use it or you can use the percentage, but it's only depends on your preferences. So as I said, I will go with M's, I will unlink all the values and I'll go from the left because this is the left. And one more thing, which is really, really important to understand here is that it goes from left to right as usually we have all in languages, but here the top will be here and right will be here. The bottom will be here and the left will be here. Just keep it in mind. I know it is very intuitive and obviously, but sometimes it is really important, especially when we are working with a clean code is to remember that it goes clockwise and not counterclockwise. So let's say I want to add a little spacing rudder here from the left and push the title to the left. So let's add, let's say three M's and you can see here that it pushes the title to the left. Now let's say I want to add also one more M from the right. And let's say here, let's add one more and one more. And you can see it's kind of in the middle, but it's aligned to the left. So let's hide our sidebar and let's see what happens right now, because there is so much space, you won't see a lot. But if I would remove the padding, you will see what it did right now. You can see here and it stretches a little more. Now, what is the difference between this, the padding and the margin? Now you remember, as I said, the margin only applies to what is from the box out. So from the element out, because we don't have our border, I will add the border to show you exactly. So it won't be confusing because when we don't have borders, it can also sometimes look as it is, whether it's padding or margin. But here there is one more thing that I wanted to explain to you is that the margin can push the element outside the box or sort of, I mean, again, it's sort of it's on quotes. Why? Because the element in the markup, if you're familiar with CSS, it is relative to the other elements or to the parent element. In that case, it is the container. So when it is margin, so it pushes it, but it still stays in the container. When it is padding, it still stays in the limits of the container and does not go beyond it. So let me show you what I mean. So first of all, let's add our border. Let's do solid. Let's do three and let's set it to black. So let's go to our layout and right over here, let's go to and set it to M's and then let's set it to right. Let's do something like five. And here you can see here that it is inside the element. But one thing that I wanted to show you here is that you can set the left to be negative while you cannot set the padding to be negative. No matter how much I'll push the negative, it doesn't change nothing. So let's put it to zero. But once I set the margin to negative, let's say five, you will see that it pushes it beyond the box or the container. So let's see here right now it is in action. As you can see here, it goes beyond the container and pushes it even more. That is what is called overflow. That is a subject for another video. But I just wanted to show you that you can also play with the margin to be outside the box inside the box and it only happens in the margin. So it means it cannot happen in the padding. And one more thing that I wanted to show you here is if you want to style as something different, for example, let's say here we have some padding here. I know that because if we go here, and we see that everything is aligned perfectly in the middle. But something here tells me from years of experience that everything aligns, but something here pushes it to a certain point. So let's inspect that. Let's go to our container. Let's go to advanced. And here we have padding left and padding right. While here we have some padding on the top. So I assume it's from this title. So let's go over here. We don't have anything here. But one thing that I can also assume that in the container, it is aligned to the center as we can see right here. So we have different options to 
set and align our elements but in total the padding is what gives you one more option to stylize the elements and align them differently inside your boxes or inside your containers and yeah that's pretty much it I really hope I was able to explain to you the difference and to give you a little bit more information on how the margin and padding works on your website when you're editing with Elementor or when you're writing code if you are if you're writing custom CSS and if you like this video I'll be really glad to if you leave a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any video that I upload whatever it's on Elementor WordPress or WooCommerce and as usual I'll be seeing you in the next one